Today's story. Well, today's story is about Elijah and the prophets of Baal. There had been no rain in Israel for three years. At this time, a prophet of the Lord called Elijah visited King Ahab of Israel's court. King Ahab used to worship a god called Baal. Elijah said to King Ahab. I challenge you to prove to me that Baal is the greater god than the true god of Israel. Tell your people to come to Mount Carmel and meet me. Bring 450 prophets along with you. The next day, all the people and prophets of Israel met there. Elijah told the prophets to make an altar for Baal, while he would make one for his god. He loudly said. Let the God who is greater light the fire in the altar. The prophets of Baal sang loudly. They danced around the altar. They prayed for hours, and yet there was no fire in their altar. Elijah watched them with a calm face. He prepared his offering on an altar made of twelve stones, one for each tribe of Israel. He poured water into his altar. Till it was totally wet, he then loudly spoke to the skies above. Lord, send fire to this altar so that I can prove to the people that you are indeed greater and the true God of Israel, and I am your man. In an instant, the altar caught fire, burning up the water, offerings, and stones around it. When people saw this, they bowed down. And started saying God's name. Rain came down from the skies, and the drought ended. Wow, that was amazing! True. Now my question is, on which mountain did Elijah ask the people of Israel and prophets to meet? Oh, oh, I know this one. It was Mount Carmel, right? Well, not exactly. It was Mount Carmel. You are always thinking about food. Today, I'm going to tell you another story about the man called Elijah, and how God saved him from the drought. Whoa, that sounds quite interesting. Awesome, Holly. Let's get on with the story. All right. The two kingdoms of divided Israel. By Israel and Judah, King Asa ruled Judah, while King Ahab came to power over Israel. King Ahab was an evil king and did bad things in God's sight. He even built a temple to worship the false god Baal. Elijah was God's loyal servant. He took a message from King Ahab from God. He told King Ahab. The God of Israel, the God I serve, says there will be no rain or even dew on all the land until I say so. God asked Elijah to go and hide in a place where the Kerith ravine joined the River Jordan. 
You can drink water from the brook, and I will send ravens to bring food. God said. He said Elijah would be safe there, even though the land would go into a drought. It was impossible for food to grow without water. Elijah did exactly what God asked him to do and hid from King Ahab, who was extremely angered by him. God sent ravens every morning and night to bring food for Elijah. Elijah stayed there until the brook from which he drank water completely dried up. There was no drop of rain or dew on the land throughout the time Elijah stayed there. That was a wonderful story, Holy. I loved it. Me too. I am glad. So now, it is time for today's question. Who was the king who ruled over Judah? I know. It was King Asa. Well done. All right. Today I'm going to tell you a story about how God gave back life to a widow's son after he died. Well, that sounds interesting. God took good care of Elijah even when the Kerith ravine dried up. He asked Elijah to go to Zarephath and seek help from a widowed woman. He said he had instructed her to provide Elijah with food and water. Elijah entered the village of Zarephath and immediately saw a woman picking up sticks. He asked the woman to bring him some water. As the woman went in, he called for some bread too. She said, I do not have a single piece of bread in my house. I only have some flour and a little cooking oil left. I was picking up these sticks to make the last loaf of bread, after which my son and I will die starving. Elijah assured her not to be afraid. Go ahead and make your last meal for you and your son. But before that, make a small loaf of bread for me and you'll see that you still have enough food for you and your son until God sends rain for the crops again. The widow did exactly what Elijah asked her to do. After that, every time she needed to make bread, she had enough flour and oil left in the jars. No matter how much she used, she always had some left over to feed herself and her son just as God promised. A little while later, the widow's son fell very ill. His health worsened every single day, and finally he died. The widow was heartbroken. She sent for Elijah and said to him, Why did you keep us alive, only to let my son die now? Elijah carried the boy's body to his own room and laid the body on his bed. He prayed to God. Oh God, why have you brought such pain on this woman who took such good care of me? Please God, let the child's life return. God answered Elijah's prayers and gave back life to the child. Elijah then took the child to his mother. She said, Now I know that you are a man of God, and he speaks through you. That was an amazing story, Holy. I loved it. I am glad. Now, let's see how much you kids have paid attention. The question for today is, what was the name of the place where God asked Elijah to go after the carrot ravine dried up? Is it Zarephath? Did I pronounce it correctly? Yes, you did, Tubby. I will, but you have to pay attention. But we always do. All right, children. Today's story is about the prophet Elisha and the Syrian general. 
there was a time when there was war between Israel and Syria. The Syrian army had a brilliant general. His name was Naaman. With the help of Naaman, the Syrians attacked the borders of Israel. They stole and took whatever they could find. They even took slaves from the Israelites. Among the slaves was a young girl who was Naaman's wife's maid. One day, Naaman got infected with a terrible skin disease called leprosy. Many doctors tried but could not heal it. Naaman was very upset. Naaman's wife would often cry seeing her husband in pain. One day, her maid saw her mistress crying. She said to her, There is a holy man in my homeland. His name is Elisha. He is known to perform miracles. I am sure that if Master goes to Elisha, he will be healed. Naaman's wife told him about Elisha. She asked her husband to send word to the king in Israel that he wanted to meet Elisha to be healed. When the Israeli king heard about Naaman's strange request, he said, First, he attacked my barter, and now he wants me to cure him? This is just another reason for war. Elisha, who was with the Israeli king, said, Let him come. He should see that the prophet of God lives here. General Naaman came to Elisha's house in Israel. There, a messenger told him to go and bathe in River Jordan seven times. The general was angry. If I had to bathe in the river seven times, I could have done that in Syria. The messenger said, If Elisha asks you to do something, you should do it. Naaman bathed seven times, and the seventh time, his leprosy was healed. Naaman said, It is a miracle! It is true that God lives in Israel. So how many times was Naaman asked to bathe in the river? I know. He was asked to bathe seven times, right? Imagine bathing seven times. I hate bathing even once. Great. Today's story is about Elisha and the lady from a city called Shunem. There was once a prophet of God called Elisha. Elisha was a very sweet and kind man. Wherever he went, people loved him. He traveled and taught people about God. He helped them in whatever way he could. He really was very helpful. There was a woman who lived in a city called Shunem, who had heard a lot about Elisha and knew that he was coming there. So she told her husband to build a room on their terrace for Elisha to stay in when he was there. When Elisha reached Shunem, the woman welcomed him and he lived in the room on their terrace. Elisha was very happy and thankful for all that the woman had done for him. He said to his servant, I wish I could thank the kind lady, but she is already so rich, I cannot think of anything else she might need. The servant smiled and replied, glad that he could be of help. Well, I'm sure she would like to have a child. And so, the next day, Elisha said to the woman, Next year, by this time, you will have a child in your arms. The woman soon gave birth to a son, just as Elisha had promised. But one day, it so happened that her son became very ill and died. The woman ran to Elisha. Elisha came to the little boy's room and prayed quietly. He then breathed air into the boy's mouth and suddenly, the little boy sneezed. Elisha turned to the woman and said happily, Do not cry anymore, because your son is alive. That is a lovely story. I am so glad that the boy didn't die. See, good things happen to you if you are good to people. Now, this is my question for you. What did the servant suggest to Elisha to gift the kind woman? Oh, I know, I know. The servant told Elisha to give the woman a child. That is right, Tubby. Very good. Today I'm going to tell you another story about the man called Elijah and how God saved him from the drought. Whoa, that sounds quite interesting. 
awesome, Holly. Let's get on with the story. All right. The two kingdoms of divided Israel were Israel and Judah. King Asa ruled Judah, while King Ahab came to power over Israel. King Ahab was an evil king and did bad things in God's sight. He even built a temple to worship the false god Baal. Elijah was God's loyal servant. He took a message from King Ahab from God. He told King Ahab, The God of Israel, the God I serve, says there will be no rain or even dew on all the land until I say so. God asked Elijah to go and hide in a place where the Kerith Ravine joined the River Jordan. You can drink water from the brook, and I will send ravens to bring food. God said. He said Elijah would be safe there, even though the land would go into a drought. It was impossible for food to grow without water. Elijah did exactly what God asked him to do and hid from King Ahab, who was extremely angered by him. God sent ravens every morning and night to bring food for Elijah. Elijah stayed there until the brook from which he drank water completely dried up. There was no drop of rain or dew on the land throughout the time Elijah stayed there. That was a wonderful story, Holy. I loved it. Me too. I am glad. So now, it is time for today's question. Who was the king who ruled over Judah? I know. It was King Asa. Well done. Well, today's story is called the chariot fire. You mean something like a burning chariot? Is that it? Whoa! Sounds exciting! Let's hear the story first and see what it is all about. Yes, yes! Go on with the story! Great! Elijah was an obedient servant of God. He was very pleased with Elijah's service towards him. So, God decided to take him to heaven without him having to die. Another man named Elisha traveled along with Elijah, learning from him how to serve God. One day, Elijah asked Elisha to stay where they were, while he went to Bethel as God had called him there. No, I will not be separated from you. Elisha said, I want to go with you. So they both went to Bethel together. Elijah and Elisha reached Bethel. There, a few prophets came up to Elisha and said, Did you know that God is going to take your master away from you today? Yes, I know, but I do not want to talk about it. Elisha shouted. Elijah once again asked Elisha to stay in Bethel while he would go to Jericho as God called him there. Elisha refused to stay back. So, Elijah took him along to Jericho. In Jericho, Elisha met a few prophets who said, did you know that God is going to take away your master from you today? Yes, I know. He answered. Elijah then came to Elisha and said, Stay here, Elisha, while I go to Jordan River, where the Lord has asked me to go. Once again, Elisha refused to go without his master. So they went together to the Jordan River along with 50 prophets. Elisha and the prophets watched Elijah take off his robe and slab it on the waters of the Jordan River. 
The Prophet saw the river water divide, and the two men walked through the dry ground. When they got to the other side, Elijah asked, What can I do for you, Elisha, before I am taken away? Please make me your successor. Elisha answered, That's a hard thing for me to do. Elijah answered, But if you see me while I am being taken away, then your wish will be granted. And if you don't, then your wish will be unfulfilled. Suddenly, a chariot of fire, pulled by horses of fire, swooped down from heaven. The chariot stopped right in between the two men and carried away Elijah to heaven. Elisha saw this entirely. He picked up Elijah's robe and returned to Jordan River. He struck the water with it like Elijah had done. The water parted and he walked through the dry ground. When the prophets saw this, they shouted, Elisha is the successor of Elijah! They all ran to meet him while they sent men to look for Elijah. Elisha told them not to search for Elijah, but they sent the men anyway. Fifty men searched for Elijah for three days, but couldn't find him. When they returned to Elisha and told him about it, he said, I told you so. Wow! A fire chariot pulled by horses of fire? Wow! That was a wonderful story, Holly. Great! You kids loved it. So now for today's question. How many prophets followed Elijah and Elisha to the Jordan River? Fifty prophets! Yay! I remember! Well done, Gumbo. I hope you liked the story too. We promise to be back soon with another new story. Until next time, bye-bye. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hidden plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush.